Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna do an a la prima direct painting style painterly approach to this landscape. And I'm gonna give you a couple special tips and tricks along the way. And we're gonna focus on big, bold brushwork. And so this is gonna be hopefully a live painting that we can finish really quickly with the goal of making it as um, efficient as possible. So using as few brush strokes as possible and also keeping my uh, video time really short. Um, first thing I'm gonna do in this picture, which is just pretty, uh, it's a, a kind of like a st uh, very basic painting. When you think of it, there's not really anything even to draw. It's just, um, it's just a, a field and a mountain range in the far background and a very limited amount of, of content in between. So something like this is really fun for doing warm-ups um, because you have uh, just there's not much to do with perspective, proportion, or anything like that. You're not even having to worry about placement. This is just as simple as it gets. A um, couple things though I want to point out when you I'm, when I'm painting this big bank of the mountains across here, right? Um, I even if the color picker doesn't give it to you. I would like to suggest that you modulate the um, both the color and the value just a teeny bit. It'll help um, do two things. One, um, if you look at the the way that this reads, um, it reads like there's a little bit of lighter value right here above the the wheat or whatever we're looking at. And so I'm gonna push that in. And even if the color picker doesn't grab that for me. Um, don't always trust the color picker. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is um, as I start to work in this warmer dark that just tucks right up underneath this tree here uh, and then kind of you see it peek through a couple times along this horizon line. Um, make sure to use multiple samples for that as well. And don't just choose the same one over and over. Uh, you want to have some of that natural variety that you have if you were mixing these colors um, on a paint palette. Now, um, the sky clearly has a lot of banding and uh, a, graduates from one value to the next, both side to side and top to bottom. So we wanna make sure we do a good job of that as well. I'm gonna crash the paint right into each other, the colors here, and you're gonna get some of what that, that's called, uh, what is that called again? The real color blending. So it's allowed, when I turn that on, I never really even play with the kind of deep menu stuff in our age. Um, but when I turn that on, it gives me some really cool um, unexpected results. Now, um, one thing I'll, I also want to point out at this point is changing your brush size. So along the way, you know, don't um, be content to just use the same brush, the same width, the same everything. Um, with a traditional brush, you can turn it and twist it and do all kinds of things to get different marks. And you can do that here in Outrage as well, but it's not as, there's not as much range in digital as you have with a traditional brush. Um, and so you really wanna do your best to make, in a painting like this, it's all about the brushwork. And so uh, you, don't, you don't have really anything else to lean on. And so uh, really try to shift your brush size quite a bit. Uh, another thing I wanna point out Oh, see, do you see this? How that right at the edge, if I zoom in here, you can see that the, the way that those colors are blending is really, it's really good. It looks really cool. I'm going to stay zoomed in so we can kind of see this a little bit better. Um, I'm going to grab the, the brightest bright here, and that's going to be my truest highlight. And when I put this mark in here, I'm going to start to remind myself to keep things really simple and work a little bit more quickly. This is a painting I want to leave really raw. I want to leave all the texture. Whoa, <laughs> I want to leave the texture in the brushwork. Sometimes if you don't make enough of a horror, like if the brush doesn't travel enough while you're making a mark with a really big brush, um, you'll get some weird stuff happening. But did you see this? This really, really cool thing happening. That's that real color mixing that I was talking about. And it looks so cool. Um, so pretty. So the uh, next thing I want to do is once I kind of work my way from this little hot spot here is um, is just to kind of talk about these big fields of, of lavender and kind of, uh, I don't know what, 
it's these purples, right? So, um, it's really a perfect painting to talk about brushwork. I want to use as much interesting mark making as I can. Um, so some long verticals to help kind of feel the expanse of the sky as it's reaching up, but then also some smaller marks. And I'm going to use the marks themselves as the blending. So I'd rather uh, not even touch the palette knife in this painting, like not at all. I just want to go all in on the mark. And I want to also, and, and there's a reason here why I didn't do any pre-draw, is because I want to let my uh, painting be all about uh, responding to to the experience of the painting. So um, smart, of course, smarter to do a pre-draw, to do some sketching, to plan your composition. But with digital in a, in a little warm-up painting like this, you don't have to, right? Like you can, it's more for me about getting my arm moving. You know, I'm not drawing with my, my wrist here. I'm drawing with my whole arm. I'm trying to really pull my stylus across the tablet surface with a little bit more energy. And it's just sort of to wake up and sort of like, is the equivalent of like a morning stretch, right? Um, so with that being the goal, oh, I love that little way that, that Mark picked up. So let's see if we can get that to happen again. If we're coming down here and pick up, it, it is picking up the color in a little bit different way than if I didn't have that real color blending turned on. So I'm pretty fond of that. Um, here, I think, honestly, I, I wouldn't want to play too much more with the sky. I think it's a it's looking like I want it to. It's very bold. It's very kind of like um, chaotic almost. And um, the one thing though I want to help help along here. And again, I'm going to use not trust the color picker entirely. I'm going to use my own mod modification here to just push. I'm not going to try to lie or exaggerate too much here, but I'm going to try to push the saturation just a bit. Um, on this part of the sky that's directly above where the sun is just fighting its way through the clouds. And um, then take a little break from the sky. This is the dilemma. Um, this right here is the dilemma. Do I make this painting, which this the, the photo reference is divided kind of at the um, it's not divided in half. It's kind of divided at that golden ratio at the 1 to 1.618 um, proportion. And I think that looks really very good. Um, but I, I think I want to do something that's a little bit more exaggerated and push that um, proportion one way or the other um, more extremely. So I'm not sure which way I want to go yet. And thanks to digital, I don't have to know until the end. Um, so let's see, make, make my brush really big down here and try to get enough paint on here. They can start to see the whole concept before I make a decision. And there are a lot of different values in the wheat here and there's some really spectacular little highlights that, um, you know, when the, the plant structures are at just the right angle they capture just enough of that very faint light that's coming from that sunset and it it really gives the piece uh, a sense of um, presence to have these different planes ca capturing that light because with as flat as the sky is you don't have anything there any surfaces there the tree is silhouetted you don't have any surfaces to really receive that light and so when you're painting in this foreground anywhere you can. You want to make sure that you're grabbing uh, in, in any opportunity to to speak clearly to the light direction in your scene. Uh, and and so um, you know while I was exaggerating a touch here, here you do not exaggerate at all, but you make sure absolutely not to ignore it. Um, the other thing I would suggest is that while it is a pretty haphazard arrangement of lights and darks and um, you don't feel hamstrung by what's there. You're allowed to design it a little bit. You know, it's like 
when you're painting hair, the hair is a con of, of a model is, is usually in motion, you know, unless they're like a supremely good model and they're not moving at all or in your, it's not from photo or whatever, you just have them in the studio and they're just sitting there. Well, if they go take a bathroom break, well, the hair is going to be a bit different when they come back. Hair is always, you know, it's poseable and it's changeable and um, just like this, this vegetation. So I would not feel like you have to put it down just like it is. Um, I, I definitely, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting it down just like it is, but it, this is where you can allow yourself a little bit of creative license, I think, to to invent a little of the uh, design. But if you feel like when you're doing that, things are getting squirrely, uh, then just stop, you know, re uh, recalibrate and, and um, you know, fall back to relying on what's there in the image to, to use as a reference. Because I think, um, a lot of the time when we uh, are a, a new new artist, you know, we we don't really know sometimes the way in which we want to take liberties, um, so that we can still stay <laughs> successful. Um, that that's a tough one. It really is, um, and I think that's where you're. If you have like experience as an illustrator, or you have experience um, with more like uh, formal design principles, you'll you'll do better you know and I think uh, when you start to kind of go away from your reference and I think that's um, pretty normal uh, and if you don't have that background don't feel afraid it just it's just worthwhile studying the whole of art so that you have a greater sense of of all this stuff and I think you know some people have an amazing intuition about what works and what doesn't um, and you know that's that's brilliant. So go go with it. Go with your strengths. But um, if you do get lost and feel far afield, just lean back into the reference image and you'll be good to go. Um, so I get a little wordy there. Sorry about that. But I'm going to kind of try to bust this in. Um, one thing I'm trying to do, uh, sort of I should have spoken to it, but it's because I have this this axis of, of light that's coming from the sun here, um, a lot of the way I'm painting the wheat, wheat is sort of this V shape. Um, I'm painting like in from this side and in from this side so that I'm sort of pulling the eye both with the contrast of light and dark here but also with the mark making that sort of pointing to that center axis. Um, I'm trying to paint as much of that in as possible because let me go bigger here. Um, I'm just trying to, to sort of shove the viewer's eye um, toward all of that interesting light. And you do that, of course, with the contrast, like I said, but you can do it with the mark making too. And then um, I think for me, doing stuff that's focused on mark making is really, really fun. I mean, mark making is the, the, the actual stroke on the paper or on the canvas or on the tablet is, that's where I'm a little bit like a mystic, you know, where I think like, I, that's where I get my rabbit's foot out or whatever, right? I don't actually have one of those. But the idea being, um, that's where I become a little bit more of, uh, yeah, it's just like a mystic. I, I mean, I start to become a little bit goofy about that stuff because there's a, like uh, art can be just very, very technical and, you know, you can just block your values and you can knock in your, your proportions and then you're just good to go. Um, but there's like this uh, mystery and this this kind of evocative thing for me that happens with with big brushwork, and I really like to have it this like specific feel. And I'm working with the brushwork, and you know it's one of those things where it's like it's either there or it isn't, and I don't really like. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of brushwork that I'm like just not happy with it, and. Um, so being picky about that is one thing, but I think, um, you know, it's real easy and, and really nice to have a, a photo like this to work on because you don't have to worry about drawing. It can be just all about the mark. And this is one of the, the cool things about ArtRage is the software has a real floaty touch to it. And depending on how you have your brush set up, it can really feel like the, the surface is pretty slippery. And, and and light and that can be a pretty nice 
feeling because it can just make everything can kind of just move you know like there's no real friction and other software um, doesn't feel exactly the same but there's each one has their own vibe and I I'm struggling to know which I like the best um, I've been playing with a bunch more softwares recently just for my own professional curiosity and that's one of the things I'm most I don't know just sort of sort of like compelled by is is why they feel the way they do you know they, there's the input data from the tablet is is pretty consistent right like the the way that that data is then interpreted as a painted mark by these different pieces of software that is really compelling in how different it is um and it's not just between like the faux traditional art, uh, art programs like art rage or or rebel rebel or 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 those kind of things but or like fresco when it does its its live paint um but but yeah it's not not i mean even those ones which are are more similar they don't feel the same and at all and uh, i'm just in intrigued by that um there must just be quite a bit of difference in the way that their algorithms calculate and give feedback to the mark. So fun stuff. Um, I think this is pretty close. The only thing that's not satisfactory to me right now is the um, relationship of the those kind of coral pink clouds to uh, the surrounding more lavender clouds. But um, before we totally finalize that, I want to show something that I think is kind of cool. So at this point, I like what the overall kind of the overall kind of energy of it. But I and I but I don't want to go back and paint the underpainting where it see it's kind of like white showing through. And some artists will do an underpainting and others won't. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is just show you the benefit of, of some different underpaintings. So this is just using the paint roller and um, using sort of that, that peachy pink color that I sampled from the cloud there and just painting that all the way in. And then once I drag that to the back, you can see the difference between the painting there and there. Now, if I was to pull that back to the front and let's just sample this a real, real bright, obnoxious color and we can even let that kind of nestle in here and keep the rest of it, kind of that coral color. And now look at the difference. It's interesting. Now we're gonna do an even more kind of uh, obvious experiment. Let's take some darks in here. And then, so now I'm matching up a little bit there, but, um, Actually, I meant to do this one next. I'm actually going to create a, a second layer here and just go the obnoxious route and uh, add a real vibrant, cool color here. Turn this layer off. So you can see here the, the real obvious cool tones that are being picked up. And it works surprisingly well. Um, you can even draw with that layer on the background visible and you can kind of see how you like it. Um, because I have that real color mixing on, it's doing a heck of a good job of adding those two colors together and making a, a kind of an appropriate um, combination. So I'm, I think I'm gonna leave that cooler tone. I think it looks really cool, uh, no pun intended. And just see there. And then I'm gonna finish this painting with a couple very, economically placed marks with the palette knife. Now I um I missed something kind of crucial here which is that there's this this element of unbelievable like hot pink highlighter color that's popping in right above the mountain right there. And as you can see, I didn't even worry about painting the mountain range precisely. It was not relevant. This was not about that kind of stuff. So um, 
this is one of those paintings where it's good for you to not have to worry to be accurate. This was all about just having fun with mark making today. So hopefully that is a productive exercise for you. Um, what I would do before I would call this finish though, is I would kind of get busy in this, in this area here. I might put my stiffness all the way up and I might bring in some more like, um, I just would like to add a little bit more dimension. Now here's something, I I have kind of had my um, pressure sensitivity, sensitivity turned off almost the entirety of this painting. And the reason I'm I'm enjoying that for this work is that I can keep a very square proportion to my to my mark. Um, if I had turned that on, I actually have it turned off at the tablet level. If I had turned that on, then when I'm pushing at different sort of pressures, then my mark is going to have some tapering and stuff like that. And I sometimes don't want that. Sometimes I want everything to be that same shape. And um, it gives the piece, it, I don't know, it almost works a little bit more like a real paintbrush when you do that. So that was kind of a fun shift as well. I'm um, going to break up this big mark here. Go. So overall, for me, this is a really fun exercise and a perfect way to warm up um, for today's painting. I think what I'm actually going to be doing for today's painting is painting outdoors with my traditional paints. And I, I would, but I was at this, I was just here in the studio, and I just wanted to do a little digital painting. And I think this would be actually really, really good for my habits when I go outside. Um, I'm already painting with big brush and I'm already keeping it simple. I hope that translates to me doing a better job when I'm outside. And um, now just real quick, I felt like there were, I was losing a little bit of the um, some sort of the essential darkness of that bank of trees here, and I. So I just put it back in and, and it re it reads a little too strong the way I did it, but so I'll just mix it in and it's important though. I mean, you don't ever be satisfied with your values as placed, you know, and it, you have to sometimes dig a little deeper and really work at trying to get it right. Um, and here's, here's one other little thing. Art Rage has such great tools and they feel so natural, but, um, it's not a real tool, right? It's not a real paintbrush. So just sometimes there's like weird things that happen at the edge of the mark. And I like to go in and even if I'm painting kind of from far away, like I did with this painting, I like to go in and clean that stuff up a little bit um, before call it, call it done. Um, notice how I'm also uh, thinking about the the way that there's a tree that with a trunk and then out from there, there's the branching. And how you can, using just stroke direction again, um, just suggest all of that branching without having to paint it. So um, stroke direction can be a really good way for you to uh, be a little more economical with what you have to do in the painting. It's this idea of cross contour where you're suggesting the contour of an object um, just by the stroke direction as you're laying down the marks. So that said, um, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed today's little warm-up painting. Um, and hopefully you feel like, uh, I don't know, I, I'd love, I, I wish there was a way that we could just create like a big group where people that like uh, get excited about what we're doing here um, and do their own, Could we could all just tag each other and, you know, Say hey, this is what I did. I got it. I got. I did my. Here's my simple landscape. Here's my warm up paint, painting from today, and just to kind of keep that momentum going, uh, because I think uh, with as busy as everybody is, and you know, it's just hard to be on so many platforms and keep on top of everything. But if you, but the, but that's kind of the point, right? It's like if we're not finding a way to connect 
over our work, then uh, we're not we're not getting that inspiration that we're looking for in all this stuff. So hopefully uh, we can find a way um, to do that. But um, you guys, best wishes to you. Uh, hopefully you're having a, a really nice Wednesday, and um, I will see you hopefully soon. And I'll hopefully see you with a painting that is from landscape around here I'm doing some outdoor painting i'll try to get it my recording kit out and and do some of that so all right guys take care uh thanks again again this is art rage six all right this is art rage six that was a a really happy accident you know as bob ross would say i accidentally dragged some of this pink down into here and again i don't want to oversell it because you don't want to have your um something that's capturing the light from the actual light source be the same intensity of light you know you don't want this value to be competing with those values this is should be the highest key but uh, if you do kind of have a little bit of bleed in out in there we have like one area here that's like got a teeny bit of that same as long as the proportion of that is really tiny compared to this then you can kind of get away with it right so here we can just be like just a little pop right and, and if you go over the top it'll get really cheesy right and you see that those kind of paintings all the time in coffee shops where people just are exaggerating the heck out of stuff. And it it's cool and it might look good over your couch, but I don't really think it's good habit for your your painting practice. So, um, okay, not to get too preachy at the end. So sorry, but you guys, that's my art rage warm up painting of the day. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.